Hi friends, today I'd like to make a video that's a bit uh, different and it has to do with the uh, world of education. So today my oldest daughter was free from school because all her teachers are joining um, celebration like a world of big world of uh, party let's call it here in the Netherlands to celebrate the 100 years since the first world of school opened. And because this YouTube channel is also about my Etsy shop where I make world of toys for kids and for schools as well. Uh, I thought it would be it might be interesting for you to know why I chose Waldorf, not only um, as a school for my kids but also as um, yeah as, as a way to express myself creatively why why I restrict myself in a way to that specific um, way of creation let's call it so um, the thing that really attracts me, that really attracted me uh, to Waldorf education at first was the fact that Waldorf schools are heavily based on arts, different types of arts. Like They are loaded with music, with a type of dance expression, let's call it called uh, Eurythmics. Uh, and then they also do lots of drawing um, with m many different media. So they use a, a technique called wet on wet. They use chalk drawings. All the teachers are actually they have lessons and they know how to make amazing chalk drawings. Uh, and they also spend a lot of time outdoors. The kids spend a lot of time outdoors, and they follow very closely the rhythm of the year, so the change of the seasons. And um, we love that. I, I was raised to really love nature, to be in very close contact with nature, even though I grew up in Athens, Greece, which is a city full of concrete. But my parents really made a point to take us out to nature whenever they could, be it weekends and afternoon, whenever, whenever it was possible. We were in nature, and of course every summer. Uh, so that, that was for me a very... Like it's a core value, the respect for, for nature, and you really get that in the uh, world of education. And when it comes to art, again, both my parents really appreciate the art, and um, my mother is more like the literary type. She loves to read, and she taught us to read at a young age, and we've read like hundreds of books together. And my father is more on the practical side of things, in a way, like he loves to make anything basically um, so that was also for me being really uh, hands-on and creating things me with my hands and exploring different media that was something I was brought up with uh, and then uh, Nikos my husband he really loves music making music listening to music expressing himself through music he plays many different instruments no, not uh, not professionally, I mean, not, not all of them on the same level, of course, but uh, he's really good at the piano and the guitar, and whenever he gets the chance to get another instrument in his hands very quickly, he can play good enough that when you hear him play, it's something very pleasant. Um, so, yeah, for both of us, uh, arts have been, like, a major part of our, of our lives and still are. My studies were also in architecture, so it also involved a lot of arts and making things and designing things and drawing things. Um, so yeah, we, we wanted our children to have that gift, the gift to be able to express themselves artistically. Um, and uh, so so when the time came to, to choose a school for them, I started looking up for, for Waldorf schools. And a lot of beautiful images came up. So if you put Waldorf on Pinterest, you have these amazing like drawings, and songs that come up and poems and on YouTube you hear all these like very mystical songs with um, like choir singing, just voices very often, not even musical instruments or the very specific like Waldorf special musical instruments. Um, so a beautiful world. And then when you start googling a bit more about Waldorf, you come up to, to the dark side which I, I also want to talk about for a bit. So, uh, what is the dark side of Waldorf? Uh, first of all, if you ask me when it comes to, to education here in the Netherlands, like Waldorf here in the Netherlands, 
there is no dark side in the same sense that you might find in the United Kingdom. So what am I talking about? Uh, what came up for me when I was googling was quite a few blogs and also like YouTube videos and websites talking about Waldorf uh, teaching witchcraft to kids. Uh, <laughs> These were some of you American blogs I came across, like more like Bible Belt Zone um, blogs. Uh, then I came across a few articles, no actually many articles that talked about how Rudolf Steiner, who was actually uh, the man who is the man behind anthroposophy, the philosophy behind world of schools, uh, was a racist and um, how he was against Christianity and the devil himself basically reincarnated. Uh, and I started to think a bit about, okay, I mean, obviously, like Steiner lived a long time ago and it's, his writings are really heavy and complicated and it's really easy to misinterpret. And this has happened as well, like many times, like even some things that are taught at Waldorf schools might be misinterpretations of things that Steiner taught. Uh, but then I was thinking, okay, what if this man was really like a tad bit crazy and the people who want to teach to his schools are really attracted to his slightly crazy ideas and are also a bit crazy. And I was really struck by an article I read, or blog post, I don't remember what it was, that was saying that um, people actually uh, gave a questionnaire to some teachers at the Waldorf school and it was asking to fill up lots of things, among which also race. And the teachers, who were all white, had ticked all the boxes, so Hispanic, African, uh, whatever, black, white, Chinese, I don't know, like all of them. And when they asked them later, like, okay, guys, why did you check all the boxes? What they said was, well, you know, based on anthroposophy, um, like, you know, anthropo in anthroposophists believe in reincarnation, and Steiner believed that actually the white race is like the last reincarnation you can reach. We are white, which means that we've gone through all the other reincarnation, so we've been through all the races. Okay, uh, that's a bit too out there for me. I mean, what, what, what is there after that? I don't know. I mean, I was raised by my parents, like, who believe that we all become dust and there's nothing after life. Uh, they never taught me how to pray or anything like that, so I made up my own prayer and I was saying it every night. Like I watched my grandmother pray and they found it really nice and comforting. Uh, so this whole like cynical thing, I'm not sure it's the way to go either. But anyway, I found it a bit strange, I have to say. I found it a bit like cl clashing with my approach to life and certainly with Nikos's approach to life and death. Uh, I kept digging and then I found out more things about Steiner being a racist and then I found things about bullying, that because of the whole reincarnation thing many Waldorf schools or teachers believe that if you get bullied you probably deserve it because of like horrible things you did to someone during a previous life. Yeah, also not very encouraging. Uh, I read more articles about like Waldorf schools blackmailing parents that if they wouldn't financially contribute this and this amount of money, their kid would always be stuck in grade A or whatever. For us here, that's not an issue because uh, Waldorf schools are not private. You have to pay higher contributions. Like it's in our school, it's around 300 or 350 euros per year, but that's vol voluntary actually. Um, and so it's it's not so much a matter of of money here and then I started looking like uh, I was learning more Dutch as well and then I was able to look also in in Dutch make my research in Dutch and I found out that these kind of crazy stories don't seem to come up here a lot um, there are people who question why should Waldorf schools be subsidized by the government but that's that's the case also with many other like special education like Muslim schools or Catholic schools or Protestant schools or any type of school that is not like just let's say a public school. Uh, and but anyway, because of all the weird things I found, I thought, okay, you know, we come from a different country. We come from Greece. We live in a different country. Uh, we have to learn a lot of things like culturally. Will we be able to support our kids if they also go to a school that's already not like your average school? 
is our kid going to be there with all the like posh kids of the rich families and we won't be able to send them to do horse riding every Saturday or whatever? Uh, so we said, okay, we, we sent her to like our normal Catholic school of the neighborhood just because, you know, it seemed a more normal school. It didn't go well. We were not happy with it at all for many, many reasons. Uh, which are not not worth mentioning here, but anyway, there was lots of sexism, like really like high level sexism, like blue boys, pink girls, boys will be boys. They are, you know, they run around and tease your daughter because they want her attention because she's so cute. These are the kind of things I heard. Uh, they were telling me my kid is doing fine and she's a great student. I mean, four, how great of a student can you be? And they did not notice that she was stressed, that she was, she started biting her sleeves, which she was n never doing, uh, and then when she came home, she was basically collapsing, like being very like angry and nervous and yelling. So we said, okay, let's rewind. What are our values? Our values are arts, nature, compassion towards the other, trying to be yourself, trying to find yourself, and this screams, Waldo, like, really. So we said, okay, we dare to do this, we took her out of the Catholic school, which was not such a risk, right, because she was four last year. It's reading and writing doesn't start until six anyway, in Waldorf school sometimes seven. Which is the other thing we love about Waldorf, that they let kids be kids, and they don't really learn in an academic way until they are seven, six or seven, depending on the child. Like a very personalized approach, it's really depending on the child. Um, and she had already been actually to um, to, to the Waldorf, they are called Freischhole here, to, to the Freischhole Kindergarten, and we loved that anyway. Uh, so we took a leap of faith and she started at the Waldorf School and we are so, so very pleased with it. We are really, really happy with all the celebrations they make, the music, the arts that she's exposed to, the materials that they use. Uh, her teacher, I mean, of course it's a matter of luck to, to find a teacher that you like, but her teacher is amazing in the way she treats kids. She's so empathetic, but also like she can be firm, she has her limits. And I hear from my own daughter, she says like, why can't you be, can you not be more like youth mice, like her teacher's name is mice, that, that she's always calm. Uh, and I've, I've seen that, the woman is really always calm. But also, like, she doesn't mess around, so when kids can be super busy or loud, she would just say, you know, the name would be like, kid eggs, like, looking at them, be like, basically saying with her eyes, we are singing now, can you please relax, like, and the kid relaxes, and that's, that's that, that's the end of it. And she will not tolerate, like, bullying, which my daughter has, has not been a victim of bullying, but... At this age, you know, you can have kids like bugging you all the time and you don't want that and the teacher will not tolerate it. So, uh, we, we are really happy and we are also really lucky with the specific teacher, of course. Um, so yeah, the, um, the rhythm of the year, they have an amazing, uh, they call it Hrune Plan, which means basically that the schoolyard is green, like it's really planted with all sorts of plants and the kids are planting them and taking care of them and the parents are also helping out uh, and throughout the year you can really see like now it's time to plant the tulips because Netherlands now the tulips bloom now the blooming of the tulips ends so the other flowers start coming up now you have the white flowers now you start having the harvest season and you have the apples and you have the berries in the yard they will pick up the berries and you know treat the parents or make blueberry muffins or whatever from what grows in the, in the yard and uh, for those of you who don't know it, at least that's how it works in the Netherlands, like the uh, Steiner schools or Freischhole or Waldorf schools, um, they are actually religious schools in a way because uh, Steiner believed in Christianity, though not the traditional form of Christianity because he was actually from, from what I've read and understood and I do not have a deep understanding of his teachings, but from what I've read, he was an atheist, and then apparently he had some sort of vision, again, but anyway, 
and he became a Christian, but not in the Catholic or Protestant or Orthodox sense of the thing, but he just like communicated with Jesus Christ and he believed there was something else out there that's bigger than us and all these things. And there is also this dark side in a way that he was saying to his teachers like, do not mention my teachings on religion because you will be blamed as heretics and you know, people will not want to come to our school and there started like a secrecy started building up around it. But apart from this like Christian side, let's say, he also had this very spiritual side, like he would be, he would have specific rules about when you should plant your field based on the phases of the moon and these kind of things. And I know many of you are there like, yeah, okay, you're grimacing when you talk about Christ, but you know, talking to your plants and the phases of the moon, is that fine? Yeah, for me it's <laughs> totally fine. I don't know if I believe in it or not, but I just... I love this idea, this magical thinking. I love it. So for me, that was really not a problem from the start. Um, and that's that's very much like anthroposophy. And that's very much like following following nature. And you have many like farmers out there who swear it works. Of course, you have many people who believe the earth is flat and they really think it works. So I know, I know, it's no no guarantee that these are like these teachings are the truth. But anyway, my point is that. There is this whole religious aspect, but it is really again aligned with the change of the season. So now, for example, they have the St. Michael uh, celebration, uh, and it is about like finding the strength within us to, you know, after the summer that just ended, that we can find the energy to keep on going and face the winter that is coming and prepare for the colder weather like the, the smaller days and keep going, you know, and then you have all these metaphors with the killing of the dragon and all these like folklore stories, basically. Um, and Waldorf is really story based, that's the other thing that I find amazing, that children learn so well through stories and the Grimm's Tales are part of it and at first we thought, whoa, Grimm's Tales. I mean, I was I was partly raised with Grimm's Tales because my grandmother, my, my paternal grandmother was German. And Grimm's Tales, oh my God, they're <laughs> written with guilt and really freaky. But it really depends on the way you, you tell them. And I'm going to link to a relevant video because there is a man who explains it so well, like a world of educator, and I'm going to mess it up if I try to explain because I'm also no, no educator. Uh, so the storytelling is the other. The other thing that I really love, of course. Um, and also the kids at Waldorf schools, they do not te get textbooks. They create their own textbooks. Like they have different periods and they study one topic per period. And then the teacher will make drawings on the chalkboard and notes and the kids will create their own really beautiful like books with their own drawings relevant to the topic. Amazing, like super personalized. So this is my experience with Waldorf so so far. We haven't yet gone to the classes where you're supposed to read and write to see how it, how it works for my for my daughter, for my eldest. Um, my youngest just started at the Waldorf kindergarten. We love it. We knew we would love it. I don't know how it works uh, like on higher education, like because you also have the, it's called middle barish hall, so let's say high school uh, in in Harlem in our area. We will see how it works, but we are considering it. Uh, my feeling is that you need to have a lot of inner motivation in order to thrive in a world of school and be able to find yourself. Um, because you have, uh, the, you have a lot of structure in the day, but you also have a lot of freedom to do the things that you like and you enjoy. And if you're someone who cannot really find their true joy and their true calling in a way, it's quite easy for you to get a bit lazy and lost, but that's just my personal like estimation so and it's it's a very different schooling system from the horrible one I've I've gone through in Greece so I cannot so I cannot say um and to, to wrap it up a bit like to wrap to wrap up this video a bit the reason why I chose to also focus my Etsy store on world of products is because like I I love the quality I love the quality like, they're all made from natural materials there is quite a big controversy because uh, it, it conflicts with, um, with veganism. I consider veganism an amazing lifestyle if we, are, if we really want to do something about climate change. 
Um, and the whole of world of philosophy and Steiner, it all started before that. So using wool uh, and silk and animal products, there was no philosophical doubt about it. Now, I, I, I wish there was like a good alternative to, to wool, for example, w with all these felt toys that I make and felt dolls. And I've started researching a bit fibers that are more animal friendly. But the thing is that animal friendly fibers are not necessarily environmental friendly fibers like cottons. The water that you need to create cotton, of course wool as well, like because we are talking about raising animals, that's also very intensive when it comes to water consumption. But anyway, I'm looking into it. So this this is the the doubt that I that I have about the materials. But you can of course you can also use like cotton instead of wool and make different things. Um, but I really like the feeling of everything being handmade. So I stitch everything on my own. I don't even use a sewing machine. You, you know, I have here all my threads and needles and, and all that stuff. And like I'm making my little like gnomes every evening here when the kids go to bed and find it very relaxing. And I find that it aligns so well with, with how I want my kids to be, to be raised. And it's also really cool in the morning when my kids wake up and they see what I made last night and it, it feels a bit like I'm Santa Claus, you know, in my little workspace here we're working with the elves. And they're every morning, whoa, I really want to keep that one, like, yeah, it's for sale, but I could make you a similar one. But anyway, so I just I just love it, I find it fulfilling and it comes from, from my heart, so it's something that I really enjoy to make. Um, so yeah, this uh, this is my whole insight about World of. I'm sorry, I'm, I know this video ended up being really long, but I'm quite passionate about this type of education. And any thoughts you have, they're very welcome. Any links you want to share with me, like tell me why Steiner was racist or <laughs> whatever. If you want to share the situation with how like a uh, fresh whole education, like World of Education is in other countries, why you're pro or against, or if you're a former fresh whole student here in the Netherlands, I would I would love to hear your views on that uh, on that topic because of course we are just in the start of it of this journey and I'm still learning and I love what I've learned so far so I I wanted to share this passion of mine with you and uh, give a bit more insight of why I chose that that line of work in my creative business as well. So I hope you go and take a look at my Etsy shop as well. I will put a link uh, and it's called uh, Tofu Stuff, which basically is a mashup between magic wands in Dutch and the English word stuff, because I make stuff that I hope will bring a bit of magic in your, in your life. So that's the idea behind it. Uh, that was that for tonight and uh, hopefully see you again soon.